All right, here we are for another episode of the Rich Life Projects, and today will be a good day. We've got in the uh, booth today some of the champions of Melbourne comedy and uh, absolute legends, Sushi Mango, the boys, Joe, Carlo, and Andrew. Hey! Hey. <laughs> What's been happening, legends? Oh, mate, you know, I'm just enjoying this uh, this tight squeeze amongst uh, four people. This it's cosy, isn't it? It's nice and cosy in here. I love right. it. This yeah. is why when you fit five of us in here, it's the yeah. sushi yeah. mango for sure. It's it's what. What's been happening in life, mate? Being busy, obviously, I, I see. Yeah, yeah, we've been pretty busy. We're just trying to juggle a few things at the moment. We, uh, yeah, we just actually came from our podcast. We just did a podcast with uh, – Zaharakis, David Zaharakis, you know, the footy player. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just had him on. Um, yeah, we've been busy. We've just been, we've got the uh, tons of stuff. Ton of stuff. Restaurant, wine, we're writing a movie, we've got a pilot for a TV show. So there's a few few things going on at the moment. So, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that was all my questions. So that, that, that's, <laughs> that, that's finished. We're done. We're done. <laughs> no, that's good. Let's let's go back. Obviously, yeah. you guys are where you are at today, but let's go back to obviously growing up. You know, obviously the brothers yep. growing up in the – it was in the actual, like, the uh, community. Obviously, you're born in Australia. Yep, born in Australia. And, and the community of the Italians and Greeks. Yep. Mm-hmm. Where did where did you come into a big fella? Oh, look, uh, so uh, best mates at school, um, uh, also family, friends. Like, the yeah. parents knew each other. They basically come from the same re- – or one of the, his, his mum and my parents come from the same region of islands. So they kind of knew each other anyway. So yeah. we we grew up to be best friends. Carlo was a few years younger than us. He's three, four years younger. Three. So he'd be on our tails most of the time. And, uh, um, yeah, we just developed a really close bond. And 30 years later, here we are. We're still um, we're still acting like – we acted like idiots then. We're idiots now. So it's the same <laughs> same thing, yeah. So nothing's really changed at all. Yeah, so. yeah no, we're, look, but, we're, both, we're all best mates now. Yeah. I consider them both just as equally. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's great. And you can see that in, obviously, you guys, as I say, school, kids, uh, growing up, families, communities, knowing each other for a long time, and then now you just go into business together. That's obviously a lot easier to do it that way. Mm. Obviously, having a friend, the brothers, everything else, family support, yeah. um, obviously wife, kids, everything else grows. When obviously before you've become absolutely world superstars, <laughs> oh. a bit rich, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is the rich generous. life project, yeah. right? <laughs> rich life project. That's what we're on. <laughs> what what was the what was the working life? What was you know before you obviously hit the yeah. uh, the big time in regards to what you're doing now? Yeah. What what was life like? What were you guys doing work wise? What well, you want to start that yeah, one, Joe? Yeah. I was I was always in sales, basically. I was I was in um, you know, I worked in the rag trade for a while, and and then cars. Um, then I got into like um, um, just repping. Yeah, you know, I, was, I had a bunch of different repping jobs, and I worked for the Herald Sun in advertising, Yellow Pages, you know, Wheels Magazine. So I was selling ink and paper for a long time. Yeah, you know, as they wow. sort of say. So I was always in sales, um, and then moonlighting for about fifteen years. I was I sang in a wedding band and emceed weddings and corporate functions. You know, so so we, there was always that little bit of um, entertainment, um, sort of in in the bones. You know, but yeah. we've always had that since we were kids from our dad. You know, dad was always a singer, okay. uh, would sing, or he did things when he was younger as well, and. The guitar would always come out every Saturday afternoon. He'd just play by himself. So we were around it. Um, so that's that's what I did before before yeah. sushi, you know. And then, and I, I guess the boys will tell you later on what they did, because, but it was easier for me to transition because I didn't have anything. Like it wasn't my – the boys had their own businesses, which I'll tell you in a second. But So when we finished sushi, it was oh, – sorry, when I finished work, I was one of the first to be able to jump off and do the full time thing with this because, well, at the time we didn't all have to be full time because it was, yeah. you know, we, we were doing stuff but still able to um, live a different life. Where after a couple of years, it, it was like, okay, fuck, there's no time for anything else anymore. You know, mm-hmm. it was for me. For me, it got difficult because I, I was I had a business. I still have that business actually. Have it's you? I do, but I don't work in it. I'm sort of like silent partner in it now. Had to come to an arrangement, but I was uh, it was in um, it was lighting 
business, but it's now it's morphed into hot water services and stuff like that. Uh, so it's grown. It's a uh, it's grown, and I was relating back to what he was saying is I was I was burning the candle at both ends. Mm. So I was doing that and then meeting up with these guys. But initially when we started doing it, it wasn't like, uh, hey, this is a business or let's 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 get this going. We were meeting up to just do some vids and have some fun and we'd laugh with each other and whatever. Um, but then it got to this point, it was like, shit, I'm doing this during the day and I'm having this, you know, I'm supposed to be this stern CEO, <laughs> you know, and then I'm supposed to be this clown after hours, so I was like, I was, I was doing this juggling act and I was burning the candle. I was like, geez, I can't do this anymore. You know, I had to tell my business partner, look, it's turned into something else. Yeah. So I had to sort of get out. But um, that's what I was doing prior. But uh, yeah, right. you were kind of the same, really. Yeah. yeah, for a long time. A long time it was when we did our first tours in 2017 and 18. It was like, go on tour for three, four days and put put my um, work boots on and hard yakka shorts. I, I, I used to own a scrap metal recycling business. Okay. So- um, yeah, we'd, I'd be juggling the stage and then putting my work boots on and getting back in the truck for a bit there. And, and it's got too much. Just pre-COVID, I decided to back off a little bit. I was only going in like a day or two a week uh, just to sort things out. And then COVID came along and we got really, really heavily involved in what we we're doing. And I've just recently sold my business and uh, we're full-time sushis now. Full-time yeah. sushis. That's it. So, full-time idiots. Wow. That's it. Yeah. That's Which it. Was, quite, it was quite easy to be because, like you said, we've always been idiots. We just put it, like my brother likes to say, we just put a camera in front of us and, and filmed it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And, that's, and basically it kicked off in around the 2015. Yep. Yeah, 15 it started. Yeah. Um, how, know, how was the name brought about? Um, well, my, we, we were we'd done a couple of videos, and then people were saying, "Oh, you got to think of starting a page." Yeah, yeah you okay. know, Facebook, Facebook page. page yeah. This is fifteen, so this is That's before really. Yeah, before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now it's not like now Hotmail. Now you go <laughs> Hotmail, and everyone goes, "Fuck, what's Hotmail?" Yeah, it's not exactly. cool to be on Facebook. Mate, anymore, Gmail's it. That's where you got to be. Yeah. On. <laughs> it's uh, TikTok wasn't even around in yeah, two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Instagram was just. Actually, I think Instagram wasn't even around. It was I think it just, was. just I mean, I don't sort know. of starting uh, yeah. to to start to creep up, you know. Um, and um, so they were saying, "You guys start a page," and we we're like, "What fucking like a comedy page?" Oh, can I swear on this? Thing? No, no, fucking swearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's too fucking late yeah, now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> You've already said about three of them. Oh, this is just fucked, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all good. Here, <laughs> Basically, we started the page, and someone said, "You guys." Think of a name, or like, well, what are we going to call this thing? You know, yeah. And uh, my dad, uh, God rest his soul, uh, he was like, "Why don't you call it Two Brothers?" Two brothers. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, there's a lot of thought that went into that. I was going to say, and then Andrew says, and he Andrew goes, "Hang on, please, Vince, you should call it the Two Brothers, the Two Brothers, Two Brothers, two brothers, two brothers and one a friend." Two brothers, yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, and my. Uh, one day my son was saying sushi mango. He was three years old at the time and he was just saying sushi mango. And it was it was uh, just going on in the background and we're thinking about what we're going to call this thing. And and then after three or four times I told him to just to shush for a second, we said, I said, what about sushi mango? And we're like, yeah, let's do that. So that's yeah, how it came how from the a, little, a little kid taking a shit. So yeah. does he get royalties? Well, all, yeah, hey? yeah, well yeah, he yeah. probably he's has getting, a say. Yeah. At the he's end getting, of the, he's getting enough royalties now. Don't <laughs> worry about it. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. So yeah, wait, yeah. you've come up with the name, and it's a, obviously a great name because it's, it's generated so much interest. Yep. What was the – and you say you like in your previous before sushi, you know, you'd love the comedy part. You're always fucking around, fooling around with each other. What was the influences when you started to go into the sushi mango and, again, like you said, you're burning – the candle of both ends. Now you've got to be serious on this hand. Then you've got to fucking dress up in your character and then go, fucking, now, now I've got to be funny. Yeah. Who are the influences for you guys to do what you do? Comedically? Com- comedians, yeah. Uh, um, I always go immediately to to the old school, like like the, the Marx Brothers, the Laurel and Hardys, the Abbott and Costellos, so the Dean Martin. Some of your some of your listeners probably have no idea. Some might not have any idea. This is going like thirties. Yeah. Yeah. Carlos yeah. saying back and white actually, comedy, 30s, you know, back in back forties, fifties, and sixties in yeah, that yeah. era. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, even twenties, twenties, yeah, like twenties and thirties and forties. Um, you know, Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, those yeah. kind of people that had that real slapstick old yeah. school style. That's really. 
prevalent in what we do just subconsciously because we grew up watching those movies. Uh, I think that's what got us into comedy. Like those, on um, some old Italian movies like Lino Bumfi and- oh, Yeah, some of the old-, the old You know, you, I'm just- Your listeners wouldn't have no idea who these yeah. people are, but they're all- I'm not fucking worried. They're, they're all- yeah. <laughs> Well, they're, 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 the, they're, the, they're the ones we watched growing up with our father and stuff like that, so really shaped us. And then once you get the comedy bone, which you, you either have to have or don't have, you just you start looking for more and more yeah. stuff and, you know, you get into your Eddie Murphys and your- you know, you, you, even today, like guys like Will Farrell and all that kind of stuff. But um, I would have to credit the the old school yep. yeah. for 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 being the the heaviest influence. I agree. You know, I agree totally. Yeah. And plus, I mean, there's there's comedic influences in our personal lives. It's, there's dads, uncles, and whatever, all that kind of stuff, yeah. which sort of it really lend themselves really really into that style of old old old. That, you know, the influence of the old old yeah. timers and and these old. The old time is in our lives, yeah. so yeah, and that's and that's obviously those are the influences. Then you you get to where you're doing the ethnic families and all the comedy. Is that so? Obviously, growing up in that environment, that's what you sort of what when you look back and you go, "Fuck, that's what." Now we do that skit. Yeah. That look that was funny, but that wasn't funny back then. Yeah. But now everyone's loving that sort of skits that you do because the Italians, the Greeks, yeah, and everyone can relate to that because it's even. Obviously, I'm a stra- red Australian. I don't know what I call myself, but red, red, red Australian. Australian. What's that? I don't know. It's a new breed. <laughs> I never heard that. It's a term, new breed. Man. It's a new breed. <laughs> I haven't got any red at the moment. But but when someone like an Australian who's never dealt in that sort of community uh, yeah. growing up, I, I, even looking at families like that, I still relate to what yeah. you guys are doing. And do you think that's why it's so popular? I think, yeah, definitely nostalgia, which is, brother likes to say a lot, nostalgia, hitting that nostalgia bone is big. But the most important thing I think for us is to try and make it comedy for the Red Australians as well. Hey, <laughs> see this new group. I man. mean, it is, it is okay, like we do act, our characters are Italian or Greek or whatever, right? But they are comedic characters. So as a comedian, you have to try and win everyone over, most or most people. You can never win everyone. And just because they're Italian or Greek or whatever, we're not aimed at Italians and Greeks. We're aimed, we just want to be funny, those characters to be funny in, in their own merit. So they might do a funny face, walk funny, yeah. say something funny yeah. or slap funny or whatever it is. And that's communal. That's, that's sorry, universal. Yeah. So that's, that's the aim. You know, we do act. Um, and one of the things we want to do, well, is, is, you know, it's got uh, what we do has a, um, a name you know, attached to it, wild comedy or ethnic comedy. We just want it to be comedy. Yeah. It doesn't have to be ethnic or wild comedy. You know, it's like uh, I always say Kath and Kim, for instance, which yeah. are fantastic, right? Yeah. Love Kath and Kim. Um, but they are Australia acting as bogans, yeah. so to speak, yeah. and just embellishing the character. But they're not branded as bogan comedy. It's just comedy. So um, that's, I think, one of the big, big things for us, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, saying that, obviously that sort of then goes, you go across to all sort of stages of of the community. Have you had any Greeks or Italians or even Australians, like the feedback, any bad feedback in regards to, oh, that shouldn't have been said? One, one, one point, point, one, zero percent of of people would, you know, and they're, and that's so rare. Occasionally you'll get, my dad never spoke like that. You know what I mean? And well, your dad was a prim and proper to wog, Italian, yeah. Greek, whatever, that wouldn't say fucking it or fucking try and dodge the government <laughs> or try and do this or, or like there are people out there. We're not and we're not when we when we do this comedy, we don't not saying that every ethic is no, like no. this. Yeah. But this is sort of how w- the people that we grew up around, um, and and I I, I, I go I go as far as saying it was probably, you know, what? 80%, yeah, 85%, 80%, you yeah. know, of the wogs out there. Um, I think it's been very conservative, man. I think it's, it's probably, it's probably 90, more. It's probably in the 90s, you know, man. You know? 90%, 90%, you reckon? 90% of be wogs uh, tax evaders. 90%. <laughs> have, ev- have evaded some sort of a government uh, tax. No, yeah. I mean, like, so, so, but, yeah, not not many, not many. I mean, you know, there are a few out there that, you know, but, you know, they're usually people that, well, what yeah. type of comedy is there these days that doesn't have people throwing shade on it? Like, you know, yeah. you get you, you get people throwing shade. Again, like Eddie Murphy is probably the greatest of all time, in my opinion. There's people that don't like Eddie Murphy, and you think, 
how can you not like Eddie Murphy or like mm. there's, there's you know Dave, Dave Chappelle? Dave Chappelle, oh, he's Jer- an absolute oh. genius. Jerry Seinfeld, Kevin Hart, these guys are all so funny. Yeah. People don't like them, and so yeah. so I just find I find comedy like food. It's either you like it or you don't. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. You yeah, well, comedy subjective. Look, there's there's people we do get some some criticism. Okay, it's not a lot. No. All right, in. In the past, in early days, most of the criticism came from people who weren't ethnic. Yeah, like Red Australian. Just Red, Red Australian. Yeah, Red Australian. <laughs> Red Australian. <laughs> it's just but, really but, weird, but, you know? But, but it, was, it Small, wasn't what you thought. Really. It's yeah. not what you think. It's they were calling us out to be racist. They were calling yeah. us racist. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Right, for yeah. playing wogs. Yeah. So yeah. wogs playing wogs and – no offence out there to anyone, but uh, John Smith was saying, oh, well, that's racist. They're wogs playing wogs. Hang on. I'm a wog and playing not many, a wog. Not many. Yeah. Let's just call yeah. it out here. It wasn't many. It wasn't many. But when we, when it was, it was like, this is racist, and it would be like, um, you know, Bre- uh, Brendan Smith. And it's like, what? <laughs> what are you the talking Smiths? about? The you know, Smiths you know, copied you know, here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gone like, oh, hold on, you don't have a voice in this. Your, your last name doesn't doesn't have twenty eight syllables in it. You don't, you don't have a you don't have a voice here, man. You don't. <laughs> so weird. So it was really weird, I'm, and I'll never forget. I mean, we we it always shines out to me because we did a a, a uh, we had a spot on this show for the World Cup when it was in Russia when you were allowed to talk about Russia. <laughs> and uh, the World Cup was in Russia and when we did a spot on Optus Sports and we went on as the ethnic dads and look, look, they didn't do no real, they didn't really paint the picture who we were, but we were still pretty green in in the sense of people knowing us, not really knowing us. In, we, had our, we had our fans, but like <laughs> we weren't like, for instance, people that weren't fans didn't. No, yeah, so now yeah, people right. know us, even if they what they're now we're huge. Yeah. So we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're mega stars, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Everybody. So <laughs> <that's awesome. laughs> back, but that, and then, but what they didn't do is they didn't put a reel up saying, "Usually Mango a comedy team." Da, 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 da. We just rocked up there and said, "As ethnic dads," I said, "Hey, Lisa, we've been here five minutes. You still haven't been fucking a coffee, you know." And their boys start saying some shit. They said the other. The next day, the Herald Sun writes racist segment on no, Optus the Sports. No, it was. It was, it was Daily. Ma- Daily. No, Ma- it wasn't. It was, the, it was the Herald oh, Sun. Yeah, I learned something new today. It doesn't right? matter anyway. It was. It just and, anyway, and <laughs> and a, and in the comments of that, oh, on that um, Facebook uh, uh, video that was up, was like, this is racist, this is this, this is that. And it was like those sort of people. So it was interesting. It was very weird and very, we, we learned that day to go, right, we've got to be prepared, number one. They've got to set us up properly, number two. So we, we learned how to, I guess, got um uh navigate navigate thank you yeah. through the minds of not being able to blow up again next time but you I know what, say, in, yeah. in relation to that that particular segment that we did on optus we kind of went in and said what would you like us to do Correct. and they said Whatever. anything yeah, you do be yourself so, and you can't say anything you do to these characters <laughs> because yeah, they take over everything that's just so something goes over you like you lose yourself you, just, you we honestly do we just we lose you, any, anything for a laugh, anything. and anything for a laugh is dangerous. Take my in pants today. off for a laugh. Whatever, do whatever it's dangerous do, you know? in today's society. You know, I've done, I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> that's many nightclubs <laughs> on a Saturday night but after also, a you fight. Know, you know what else? That whole thing taught me. It taught me that if you get n- known enough, that stops happening. Mm. Yeah. So we once you have a. a a big enough audience, <clears> I think the people that like to bark go, oh, okay, well, they've- They sort of get drowned out. They, they get drowned out. Yeah, and, yeah. It, and, it's, and it's soft. If well, you ask me, it's soft. Yeah. Because we're, why, don't you, why don't you say it now that we're well known and we have a big army behind us? I also us. think, though, that it's that probably, Libby Carl, but it's also they know your shtick now. Yeah. They know what, what you're doing. They know what it's about. I think it's so, soft. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I think it's that. I think it's a bit of that too because- I was expecting it when we interviewed the Prime Minister uh, back back when he was Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, um, I was waiting for us to get a barrage of that stuff, you know, but it wasn't because yeah. I think that people just knew now, okay, this is what they do. They're comedians. They, yeah. This is part of their shtick. This is part of their thing. They don't just take the piss. They're yeah. something, you know. Yeah. Coming back uh, to what you said before, you asked, I think you asked Carlo, why do you think it's it's taken to so many people. I think it's because these characters, the characters we play, I think they they sort of flirt on the edge with what most people want to say and do, and they exactly, kind of yeah. like they, they get away they, with they it. Get away. Say, yeah. You say it in a silly accent. It's kind of like it's okay. It's say it if I said it like if we said it like us. Yeah. 
would be cancelled in 10 seconds. If you I, know, it's, if it's, I came it's, in here and said, hey, you fucking bald bastard, you, <laughs> you'd knock me straight, legs, legs forward, out. I'll be dead. Not at all. I'll be right? like, wow, he just called me. <laughs> <laughs> but if one of the ethnic dads came in here and said, hey, you're bald bastard, <laughs> it's funny. It's yeah, funny. Exactly. Yeah, you go, yeah, yeah you call me bald, that's cute. It's not, it's, it's, it's so interesting. We, these guys, we've all said shit to people that we probably, you could never say. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but it gets to that stage where, where you have why people resonate because you're saying and doing what people are thinking. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whatever you're doing, whether it's comic or, you know, other acting or whatever, when people go, fuck, they're doing what I want to do or they're saying what I want to say. Yeah. So then they become the followers and go, fuck, I laugh at this. This is good. Let's share this Mm. because it's funny. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what resonates with so many people. And they've known friends of Italian or Greek families, yeah. yes, and they know they've been introduced to the Greek families or or Italian families, and they go, "Fuck, that's my friends, yeah, mum and yeah, dad." Yeah, 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 there's yeah. a lot of that. A lot so of that's that. that's what it comes and into. I also think a lot of people, um, like yourself, you mentioned earlier before off air was during COVID, uh, we were doing a lot of that, saying what a lot of people were thinking uh, yeah. in a funny way, in you know, putting a little comic comic twist to it. Um, and then that scroll down, they go, oh, look, they do this wog shit as well. Yeah. You know, so it, I think this, it's just the layers yeah. of, of uh, okay, that, that's what I was saying before about yeah, there is a softness about you've got this army around you now and they're going to be a bit quieter. But I think the layers of people understanding what you do now when you're stick and then being a lot more known helps. 100%. Yeah. 100%. People, people, I think people now want – that's why they like comedy or they like a Chappelle or whatever because they're saying stuff that we want to say or we believe in or whatever and they're doing it in a funny way. I think that's that's part of what comedy is, you know. There's that slapstick side and then there's that side where you you, you, you dance on the line and, you you know, that's, should they be saying that? Should they not be saying that? But also they've had – people have had two years of – Absolute shit. Yeah. Mm. No happiness whatsoever in their life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Now they've come out of that. Fuck, everyone wants to just laugh. Yeah. Everyone wants to, where's my happiness again? It's coming back. So you, that's a part of what you guys and why, for me, looking from the outside in, why is arising so so fast is because everyone relates to it, but everyone fucking wants to feel happy again. Yeah. Because yeah, that's like, wants that's to like laugh. the medicine, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like, man. fuck, everyone Good loves time. a laugh. Yeah, absolutely, man. And Italians and Greeks is a great, place to laugh because everyone sort of knows what that family is and especially when you're pointing out certain things of those communities then people are relating to go fuck that's exactly right yeah. there's, a was, real, there's yeah. a real sorry Picard, there's a real sort of uh, if you want to really sort of st- strip it back there's a real kind of innocence and silliness about it all it's like yeah they say these d- this dumb shit right and it's funny but whatever they say, they don't mean it. They don't mean it in that context. Mm. They're just it's saying what they, they're communicating ignorant. the way they they're just communicating the way they know how to communicate. So for them, it's not offensive to say, hey, you're bald the bastard, because you are a bald bastard. Yeah, I'm and I don't really take it. To him, but right? you never say that to a person. To can, oh, we're, we're joking here, no, right? He can hit really hard. I know, I know. But I can but I can run back. I'll be back. But but I can run real fast. Um, but we, where am I going to run? We're stuck, we're stuck in here, though. No, but I'm saying, like, that's for them, it's like they just say the obvious without there's no filter on these people, so they don't mean what they say. And I think people can relate to the silliness and, and the so, innocence of yeah. it all. And so, whatever, there, there's know? we're going to Dubai to do a show. So oh, wow, so that's it. This, right? this, that one will be a good one to right. watch. Now, yeah. we're, we're doing the same show that we did here because we did three rod labor arenas. Oh, okay, and right. um, settle down there. What? Mate. No, I'm just. <laughs> And what, 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 this is, he's blowing I the trumpet. Here. What, what you, you know say? what? He's beating the chest you, and blowing the trumpet. Today was the first podcast we did it, where you it, didn't I, say I, it. I didn't get a chance to say you it. You didn't get it in. Good. I didn't get Every podcast to do, whether it's ours or someone else, has got to slip in the three road labour thing. I was going to bring that up. But no, no, no. We did these shows. And now in the show, there's sexual innuendos. There's a lot of. Uh, misunderstandings about gay sexual innuendos. There's uh, drug references. There's a whole scene where where uh, the, the the ethnic mums do drugs, but not knowing they did drugs. Um, and what Andrew just said is the reason why we can bring that show to a place like Dubai yeah, and get away with it mm. because it's all done by accident, mm. and it's never it's it's not like. 
It's not like a. It's like, innocently it's done. Innocently yeah. done. Unknowingly, you know? like yeah. you know, like oh, what are the effects of happening to me? And it's like they it's don't like know we're why. Getting a big, big. Fucking line of cocaine going yeah. on stage. Well, we were worried about. No, it. well, you yeah, do you that know? out in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> That's after the you show. You wouldn't do that on the stage because uh, no, no. you know you're getting fucking shot there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if you're feeling a little bit, you know, you, you might do at the halfway mark, just a little yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just to keep you going, going yeah. just a little one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one big one. Yeah. Little. <laughs> no, so um, yeah, but that's that's yeah. what I mean. You're gonna, but do you have that thought when you, when this comes up in Dubai and you think? Fuck, and then you have well, to second them. thought. I'll be, I'll be honest, yeah, we ask the people because the people at Coca Cola Arena, the ones that they booked us there now, we're not doing the full arena because it's you just probably just do like a quarter of it, you know, but they can just um, bring it, make it shorten it down. But we said to him, listen, man, this is, we've got these, these bits. Yeah. And he's like, nah, it's fine. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's oh, a, well, they've got, sorry. That's right. Go, go. Oh, as I say, it's a it's a it's a Muslim country, mm. so you know they've got their their ways and their rules and everything like that. And it, Dubai's like the, the Vegas, the Vegas of the United Arab, Arab Emirates, and we're like, okay, but they've still got their rules, and we've got this show full of this and that, the other. Um, you know, is it all right? And they're like, trust us, it's fine. We get Russell Peters, we get Joe Coy. They swear every second word. They blah blah this that the other. Yeah. So, but. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things. I don't even know why. In in retrospect, I don't know why we were worried because the year, the week after us, Jimmy Carr's going over there, and that yeah. guy, you know, Jimmy oh, Carr, yeah, 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 Jimmy Carr, yeah, yeah. just he goes. There's no, there's, there's no, no stopping there's on no that limits. guy. He just goes everywhere. Wow. So if he's okay, well, I'm sure we will be okay. <laughs> okay he, we went and watched him. He's a legend. He's, he's absolute a legend. legend. Yeah. We actually um, uh, met him at after the show. And he like he just roasted us straight away. As soon as we walked up to him, he goes, "Oh, he goes, oh, this is great. I like meeting retarded kids after the show." <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, "Oh, that's great. Just got burnt by Jimmy Carr." That's wow. <laughs> so that's yeah, so. A, so that's another international stage that you go on to. You've obviously massive on the the live shows, and those live shows you've done international in Canada. Yep. Um, you've done your massive ones in, in Rod Lave Arena, yeah, as you three. indicated yeah. before. It was three of them. And two Kudos Bank Arena. But uh, sorry. Cool. And, and <laughs> well, what's, when you're standing on stage or you're going into that first live stage show and then next minute you see all these fucking people and you're like, do you, do you, was that the pinch, like you're pinching yourself going, fuck, and look at, look at this. Well, yeah, what, what, what was that? So I had too much cocaine, so I was numb. Well, yeah. <laughs> you were just no. lit up. The, 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 fir- the first uh, arena, we have done stage shows like a thousand people, like and all that kind of stuff. We did that. The biggest the- we did was Palais. 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 Three, three, Before three, three, that, three, was thousand. like close to three thousand, yeah. almost three thousand. The, 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 we had that moment when we did our first arena at Kudos Bank Arena. That was like even actually when we walked in there and the stage was set up and we looked, we went on the stage just to sound check or whatever, and we looked at all the seats and we're like, oh my God. Cause it's the biggest, do you, not, not sure if you know, it's the biggest um, arena, indoor arena, indoor arena, indoor arena in arena. the Southern hemisphere. Is it? Mm. Yeah. So the whole thing, it's like 22,000. It, it like 22,000 people. We didn't get that many people. Because no. we're, our, our stage is like uh, at the end. So you can't, you have to lose. So you lose a bit oh, of it. The, not the, a quarter. A curtain or something you, across the. Well, no, you, no, no, no. no we, we're the, the stage takes a quarter of the, of the place. Not a quarter. Oh, okay. Almost it's, a quarter. Like yeah, a, so imagine it like that's an oval, and it's like that part. That part gets chopped out. You know, the stage. And so you, you can probably fit about fifteen thousand people in yeah. there, that, in, in, with a nice big stage. Yeah. But then looking and screens out. and shit like that, because you got to have LED screens on both sides, because people aren't going to be able to see yeah. what's going on. So we had to have the screens on the side, but our screen in the middle, which has our backdrop. But that, and, that, uh, that was the biggest pinch. That one there uh, was bit. That was overwhelming. Rich, I, I walked in that night, that day, you know, and it would. It felt like you were at an NFL stadium because you know they're yeah. so high and it's four tiers, of you know, seats, you know. And in that right fourth up. tier, I said to the guy, "Can we get a curtain and close off the, that those seats up?" He's like, "Nah, man, people are sitting." Up there, and first of all, question: I mean, Who the fuck would want to sit up there? <laughs> right? Yeah. It's deceivingly so close, away. though. It's like we, uh, yeah. like, but yeah, you walk far. around and and you can actually see the sh- show really closely. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, well, it's, it's, not, it's the way they like design the, it. Yeah. The AFL games at, like, say, Marvel Stadium, where where yeah. I usually go if I'm watching a game. Yeah, 
and you, you go, fuck, I'll sit up right up the top. You won't see nothing, but you actually like you're hanging yeah, over. Yeah. 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 The actual field is it's probably funny. that same It wasn't field. that bad. We, so, went, we went and took a look. We went, went up right up there. It's actually really yeah, good. Yeah, we went through all the seats. It was great everywhere. So to go back to your question, um, you don't really – have a chance, I, for me anyway, I didn't really have a chance to soak it in because the first second you're on stage, sorry, first second on stage, the lights come on and they everyone gives you a big cheer and that gives you a bit of a vomit, yeah. piss, shit yourself moment all at the same <laughs> time, right? Um, and But then you got to snap out of that straight away because you're going to go. You're on. Yeah. 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 It's true. So we look, you know, sometimes you get that little bit of emotion that, that runs through you really quickly. You sort of look at each other, but but then you're all of a sudden, I've got to get up you're and say, character. you got my fucking hair mark, and then boom, you're off. Yeah. And then you're looking out on stage, just waiting and just making sure your lines are right, making sure your laughs are coming out right. And once you finish that show, then that's probably the, the adrenaline that's dump. It. That's yeah, when the lights go probably on. Yeah. And down. that's when the cocaine comes that's in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's when the big <laughs> one gets done. Uh, <laughs> everyone's going to be watching this going, fuck, they're actually cocaine. Yeah, yeah. No, we are not. We are yeah, not. No, no, we're just saying uh, for I'll joke purposes. I know, man. We, that, after that Fukuto Spank Arena show, everyone probably thinks that we went out <sighs> and uh, partied and had a great time. Oh, man, we're so We found a servo, got some two-minute noodles, Literally. Went, went back to because because yeah, out there at home bush there's nothing open. No, no definitely. Uh, we didn't, and then we had a show the next day in Wollongong. So and uh, to add on top of that, I ate the noodles with a spoon because it was that's no right. There were no fucking... forks in the fucking hotel room. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Well, a, a teaspoon. Yeah. Yeah. And I was having my English breakfast tea with English. almond milk. <laughs> there, <laughs> these guys are even noodles. But, that, but that's what you find. I, I've done the same when when I would do boxing promotions or. Um, We've just come out of coaching a, a fighter who's just fought. When that, when you finish the night after a promotion, because you've been so stressed yeah. during that whole promotion, making sure everything's going to plan, and the last thing you really want to be doing is then going out to a packed house somewhere when you're coming down off yeah, like adrenaline. Yeah. No, no, we, we want to go. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we just but you just weren't go. invited. We've got work. No, no, we've got work. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it wrong, Max. We, did, we met Dave Chappelle uh, two weeks ago. And and after his show, we went back and hung out with him. Man. And let me tell you, we're doing it fucking wrong. Really? Uh, they have those, a good time. Guys, they have a good yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 he was on stage the next night. Next night. But, that, that, but does that catch up to you? Does well, that, I, don't, you know, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Must I, don't know. We can't, I can't. I, don't like, know. I mean, I, I just couldn't perf like perform hungover. I haven't said that. I mean, I know, that's, it's, it's a different think, show. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very energetic show. show. We're dancing and, 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 and whatever and doing all, all that on stage. So, Yeah, because we're on a first name basis now with Dave. <laughs> <That's>, um, <laughs> and Mobile, that's who's been Shit. ringing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, where are you, boys? <laughs> we're trying to find you. Rich, I'll call you back later. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they do, it, they do it like, you know, I'm not – like they just have a great time yeah. after the show and we'll, we were looking at each other going, we do it wrong. But – we do a two-hour show, like Carl Nance said. I can't fuck up my, a line that will set him up. Yeah. Right? Because if I fuck up a line that fucks his laugh, he's dropped a laugh for the night. You know, the 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 the, the team's yeah. dropped a laugh. Yeah. So you really got to make sure you're on, not just for yourself, but for, for, for your teammates. Now, as well. Is that a is that a big focus being comedians? Is when you say that, because the ordinary person, red Australian like me. Cis, cis when, white, red Australian. Yeah, yeah white. Cis. Sort of white whatever ball. cis means. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, Pest or whatever. The, you is that, you would have, sorry, i got to catch just one, on this cis thing. What is cis? Yeah, what, what is why, why, why the word cis? When uh, I think of cis, I think of a big lump. I don't think it's cis, by like the way. Cyst. It's not cis. It's cis. It's, it's, not, not, it's, not, it's not like a boil. Of course it's not, but it sounds, it's pronounced uh, the same way. If That's anyone knows what it means, this cis. Boys are only got an hour here anyway. But anyway, get back. So is that a big thing that you guys are focused on too is when you say you drop a laugh, that's like in comedian talk mm. to any – like that's like dropping money, so to speak. Very upset. Very oh, upset. Oh, yeah, man. It's a big Fuck, deal. Man, I forgot Jesus. that fucking line. That was a good laugh I've missed. Oh, it's like – it's like it you uh, and you miss the laughs and then that – Or if you say a line you know that's good and you fumble a word, oh, my God, it's the worst Sometimes it's the feeling. timing. Your timing's slightly off. Sometimes – your mic will, will, will something will happen in the mic and it just doesn't it doesn't come out. Yeah. And, and the worst, so I get upset when I lose my laughs. We all do, but I get more upset when I screw someone else's laugh up. Yeah, okay, I take okay. that really hard. So I don't really care myself. if I screw their laughs. Yeah. 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 So obviously, nah. team player. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah, he's right. But that, yeah, you, but feel, I get you that feel really part, bad. It's like it's a like, team oh, player. I, just, I screwed up. You know, it's like letting your teammate down. You know why? It's like it's like 
they, they're never going to see it because you know you've done that show. Yeah. So those people who have come and seen that show, they're never, never going to see, see the best that version line. of that They'll laugh. Never see it. Won't, won't get it again. You know? And um, you don't. And you don't. And you don't get the opportunity to get the reaction because the reaction's the drug for you know, the and comedian. You, you and you, go, and you no, can't wait, say, wait, stop, stop, stop. Guys, can you come it. back yeah. tomorrow? Because yeah. 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 we missed that fucking line. That one line. Hello, you <laughs> Yeah, yeah so stop, that's. So, yeah. But listen, I stuffed that one, all right? It's supposed to be like this, and then you, you can't so start yeah, falling yeah. spot And just spot on. Like, mm. that's spot on. I, we all feel the same. Like, if you miss something and you go off stage and you've dro- someone's dropped a laugh because of you, oh, that's... Yeah, see, I, I wouldn't even notice that. That's that's the know. thing that's interesting to me behind the scenes. I wouldn't even notice that if... Because obviously you're just going on with the next line yeah. and if no one's laughing, okay, that wasn't funny, but anyway, well, let's go on for the next one. Yeah. So, yeah. So the I, crowd doesn't know what's going on. It's, 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 it's just a personal thing. We know exactly what's going on. They don't. Your best performance and your worst performance, they say, is five... Only is they're separated by five percent. So the crowd still get has a good time. Just if you drop one laugh, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, that and plus we've got the added advantage that we now are able to screw up on stage and make it part of the act. Yeah. So if it's uh, sometimes you can't, but occasionally think you we get props fail or, or you just and you just, you just stop and just go, fuck, I fucked that up, yeah. you know, and the crowd will have a bit of a laugh on that and you get back on it. Not, it doesn't happen every time, but we've no. found a way of kind of- we're, we're pretty relaxed now. I think that's part of our shtick when we go on stage. If we stuff up, we don't give a fuck. It's we a, stuff a up. A and, the cra- and, and the crowd can join in on yeah. us. And I think it's a good way to connect with them. Like, they don't want to see us all robotic and, you know, delivering our line commit. Like, if we stuff up, we go, listen, I fucked up, and they'll laugh at that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is that yeah. is that more, the more time and experience you get on on stage and you start to connect with the, yeah. the thing, then then you know, okay, if we do fuck it up, then we can just move on and we'll make out we fucked it up because everyone in, in reality, we fuck things up too. Yeah. I get it. We get it. Yeah. But they obviously that's the, the laughing th- point too as I well. I do think it is from um, experience and get being comfortable on stage, being comfortable with each other, being comfortable with your material, you know, that you can just veer off and – like I almost had – I was on stage once, I almost had a light fall on, on me, oh, the light man, from I the top. I that like, like as if fell. It was yesterday. <laughs> you know, if I had been like five steps that way and the first line was like, oh, shit, well, I could have got compensation. Well, well, and well, the, well, the, the audience lost it, you know. One, um, one of the smooches gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, yeah, hundred percent. It comes from from uh, experience, I guess. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, the sort of the thing that sort of stood out to me uh, doing a bit of bit of looking around your first sort of uh, Fifty Shades of Ethnic, yep. um, you know, performing that. When when was because I remember you saying that was your learning curve when you're acting and what was the 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 time when you started to realise. Okay, now I've got to learn more about this. Uh, 2017 with with Nick, that stage show, when we went into rehearsal for four weeks, we were like, oh, shit, there's a whole a whole other skill level here, how to engage your audience, how to uh, how to deliver a joke, how to set up a joke. Nick, how to, Nick Genopolis. Nick Genopolis, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was, you know, was, was, was sort of teaching us stage presence and all that kind of stuff. So that I think that was probably – because prior we were doing videos and we – yeah, we have the knack for comedy. We just you either do or you don't. True. Um, and you know you can edit things and see things and whatever. But I think that was like, oh shit, we need to learn here. You learn. Something. We 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 like Carl said, we we're green as we had no idea. We didn't even know that when you went on stage each night, you you take the same steps, you exit the same, the same way. Yeah, we didn't yeah. even know that. Yeah. So we had to learn that before the lines. We had to learn where we had to st- you know, stay on stage and make sure that the crowd could see him. Because if I moved too forward, it, the crowd would I'd block them he, his view. And we didn't even know that. Yeah. Let alone knowing our fucking lines. We never <laughs> re- 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 recited lines. Yeah. So it was um yeah we it was, we had to it was a sink or swim yeah. type situation. You have to just what, you know. what was he like? Obviously, uh, in my time growing up watching uh, Nick as well. Uh, on in in shows, what was that like working actually with him? Yeah, it was awesome. It was it was great. Like just to to uh, like like the boy said, we learnt how to to run a professional show. Yeah, because and he turned it back a little bit. Apparently, it was worse back in the day. As in, when I say worse, a lot more like strict and hard, and you know, just wanted the best possible show, which is 
great to learn from, you know, because we learn not to sort of cut corners and not to uh, make sure you bring your own lighting guy and your own sound guy because everything has to be always perfect, you know, because yeah. you've only got that one shot. That's you don't right. want to miss yeah. that laugh, you yeah. know. You want to make sure everything is spot on. So we really learned lot, a lot from him in that first show. But in the second show, I think we learned more yeah. in in how how to run a a, a tour, yeah. you know. And we sort of went, oh, we could, we could now now we could probably do this ourselves, yeah. you know. And we brought a similar formula to our own. And me and the guys, we talk to anyone. So when we go to the venues, we'd speak to the venue managers and of of the of the Star Wog show that we did. Whereas then the next year, I could just make a phone call and I could just book the venue and we had our own tour. Yeah. So, and then people just were like, well, how did you book the venue? I said, well, we just rang them, mm. you know, but, what, what, but how? I'm like, I got the phone and I fucking rang them. <laughs> like, because mm. they used to use either a manager would do it or a promotion company or. So that all stayed, that, that all really helped, I guess, once we did Fifty Shades of Ethnic to when we did Off the Boat, when Dainty sort of came to us and said, we'd love to promote you guys. Well, we almost had a little bit of an ace up the sleeve to say, well, this is a deal we want. Otherwise, I can do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So we've done it ourselves. Yeah, true that. You know what I mean? Good stead to be in. Yeah. yeah. So we sort of learned how to do it ourselves and, I know, whether it was good or bad, but we learned and in good or bad processes. Yeah. And, um, and but this tour has been, fan like, the last tour was fantastic because Dainty Group was fantastic. You know, uh, Paul Dainty has been around for a very long time. The whole crew and everyone was great as well. And we still learned from them as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We learned how to bring the show to a bigger audience and a bigger venue, how to make it enjoyable yeah. for the audience. And you're always learning. And I think naturally we're all kind of ambitious people. So it's like, well, you, what's next? Yeah. What, I mean, not to say like, not, not have a big head or anything. It's like we naturally uh, cha like to challenge ourselves. So it's like, well, we've done that. It was a stage show. Then arenas. Well, now what's yeah. next? You know, we're so, always yeah. looking for – Try so you're tr always trying to be you're, you you know what it's like you're always trying to better yourself yeah, you know well, what I mean? I'm so, trying to better myself I'm trying to get more subscribers like you go I'm nearly up to yours and I mean you've got a, what 122,000 subscribers on YouTube on the uh, on your podcast and yeah. YouTube yeah yeah on YouTube I've yeah, got yeah. 400 so hey. I'm, I'm getting there I'm getting there but I understand what you're talking about in you know regards I mean? to that yeah. well, but in yeah. in saying that you got now now you're a Everything's starting to diverse. You're starting to do a lot of different things You're at that platform now. You've got your your stage shows. You've got your online presence. Yep. Uh, your podcast, as you say, and I've, I've seen some of the amazing guests you guys have had. Yep. And I was only yesterday, Danielle Weber. I had her on the podcast. Oh, yes. Hey, she's, cool. she's, she's, she's a, lovely, Danielle. Oh, and a yeah. great artist. Yes. Um, and you've had, you know, some of the guys, Alex Volkanovsky. Yes. Did you just go over to Perth? No, we couldn't go. He was go. We didn't. Yeah, no, we couldn't go because we, what did we have on? Chappelle. Chappelle. That's, Chappelle, that's about yeah, that weekend. Okay. It's spewing because I really wanted to go. Yeah. I heard it was electric. Yeah, the arena was chockers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Spewing, and I missed it. When us. when Alex was walking out like the the thunder and the whole just that whole atmosphere is just like. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. and then, and especially when he was Anyone, wrestling. By the way, hundred yeah, uh, percent. Well, I was going to ask. It was you, like, it was very I'm, in in my opinion. I. Probably he only just lost in regards to when I'm looking at the how it all works with MMA, yeah. the control time and the takedowns. That's that's yeah. when the scoring judges are looking at going. Okay, well, there's four takedowns to Neil. I mean, how much did he really? We can get into it. But how much did he really control him? He was like he, well, he was always getting up, and he didn't control him. Control like the good. The good thing about Alex was, and what made his value and stocks fucking shoot through the roof. One. He's gone five rounds with a dude who's finished everyone in yep. first or second round. Yeah. Yep. Two, when this dude's wrestling him. And gone up a weight class. And, and gone up a weight class. He's wrestling on the cage. Albard's got him in, in this. He's done the old. Yeah. 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 As soon as I saw that, I was like, mate, he's just, his crowd. stocks went up so crowd much. I just went, this, this dude's a beast. Yeah. So as soon as he finished the round, he got up and he was like, yeah, yeah. Then everyone was just like, fuck, this yeah, dude is the it, bomb. But and then there's a whole, the whole IV. I don't know. I, what's happening the with IV, the whole IV? The, they they cancelled those years ago and because it was like a an advantage. Once you've lost all the weight and yep. you put your body through hell, then you can just put the IV in and boom, you're back to normal plus more weight. So a lot of that um, went 
that was a, a few years ago now. They just cut IVs out altogether. So I'm not quite sure. I haven't really been up to speed with the yeah. IV with uh, Islam and that, but I, I've always said even when Alex fought um, uh, one of the alpha male boys, I think it was Chad, Men, uh, Chad Mendes, yep. even from that moment I thought, this dude – He's a beast. He's low to the floor, and he's just like a mongrel dog. He never he leaves get the you alone. He, he deserves now. Either. He does now. now he's he starting. does, but it's sad that it's taken, it's taken him like ten fights to go. So he had this to go, actually he had to go up a weight class and fight the 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 biggest the beast. Well, I, I in think the, I think he started to get the recognition after the Max Holloway because from what I see, the MMA company that that they fight in, I think. Wanted Max Holloway to be because he's American. They wanted him to be the world champ because everyone reckon, knew. I still don't reckon he got his props until after. Do you remember the fight we had him on a pod when he was in isolation in the hotel after he fought? Um, oh yeah, what was that dude's name? Brian uh, Ortega. Oh yes, and he yes. got out of that. He choke got out two, two choke holes. Those, that was like ridiculous. And even then. I was like, mate, can everyone just fucking have a minute to just admire what this guy is? 100%. He's a fucking pit bull. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's a hard worker and that's it. Yeah. People, he, he, okay, he's not the Conor McGregor and whatever. No, that's no, what no. people applaud. But, yeah. They but applaud he's, those he's, little hard at it people. He's he's just got the he's got the IQ, the fight IQ, yeah. and his coaches, Eugene and, and Joey Lopez. But he's just he's committed like fuck, there's no other one fighter that's committed like he is and he's got the all-round skills yeah. which makes it the whole difference again and the, the major part that Alex volkanovsky has got more than a lot of others is the belief in himself. Yeah, it seems that he way. He believes seems like a, there's no one else yeah. on this planet that is better than him and when you've got that plus all the other skills he's got, that's a dangerous That's a dangerous yeah. fighter. I don't care who you are and I honestly thought he would finish Islam in regards to uh, striking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought he is, you know, because well, Islam's got to get down lower to take him down. Yeah. Alex has got the knees and the elbows and the punches. This may not go Islam's way. But how the fight still went, everyone, Alex won that because everyone was so pumped up and adrenaline pumping because they were seeing things that haven't been done to Islam before. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's where the – no, that fucking judge has got it wrong. But when you sit down and you go, okay, four takedowns, the control time was seven minutes to three minutes or four minutes, whatever that was, that's where it sort that of got to. That last flurry so. was just the last flurry oh, when he was on top. I'm of just was, fucking punching. Like, oh, when it we finished, were losing it. everyone was just like, we've won. Yeah, yeah. Everyone with Baltis would have went, we yeah. fucking did it. <laughs> Next minute, oh, that's why everyone would have been spewing yeah, going, yeah. fucking. Got a shout out to, to the Volk. Man. Oh, he's, mate, he's the Volk, he's, he's one. Gun. Him and his coaching staff are the best in the game right at this minute. Agreed. But anyway, back to back to what we're talking about. Yeah. So you've gone through all your all your new stuff. Now you've you're great on the um, the shows, the live shows, and doing yep. absolutely amazing. You're branching out to the restaurant. Yep. What's what's the restaurant name? Well, it's it's Johnny Vincent Sam's, which is the character, our characters, three lead yep. characters. So we we had a always had this. Uh, his dream to start a brand, a sub brand that uh, of of you know things that uh, represent our culture, the stuff we grew up with, you know, wines which we've released, which is um, uh, available at Dan Murphy's and, and BWS just, everywhere just nationally. <laughs> uh, and uh, then you know we wanted to continue on that, like so we, were, we we have dreams to make it become a brand that has you know salamis, cheeses. Uh, Coffee, coffee, coffee all sauce, that, yeah. all the thing, things we grew up with, and but good stuff, good products, not yeah. like your Legos to sauce and stuff <laughs> like that. Proper, yeah. solid stuff, and natural progression was. Um, there goes the Legos. Um, yeah, yeah, endorsements. Yeah. endorsements. Oh, oh, fuck Legos. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so natural progression was a restaurant. You know, we've always been linked to food, being that what we do. Hands, great, yep, and. Um, we always say it's the fourth member. Food's the fourth member. So, you know, it just made natural sense, sense to, do that. to do that. And we've uh, decided to we, – we waited for the right opportunity and um, there was a spot on, on Ligon Street that come up and we're like – Iconic Street. Yeah, Iconic have, Street. Yeah, man. Probably have such a great yeah, restaurant. And it's, it's, it's got uh, sentimental value to uh, uh, with, with us being that we grew up there and it's a, it was an Italian street. Uh, it's not probably what it was back in the day, and we've got dreams to bring it back to its glory days and 
you know, get 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 the buzz on the street happening again, and we put it out there, and the reaction we had was three times better than what we, we thought. thought. Absolutely, uh, it, it's like are, are people going to get what we're doing here? People just thinking it's a money grab because yeah. it's really not. Because no. we're not going into this. There's six partners. Yep. This isn't this isn't to, make, to 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 retire on. This is something that's dear to our heart type Absolutely. of thing. Are yeah. people going to understand yeah. this? And the reaction was just we we haven't yeah. even put this much money into shows like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know but you, but you can you, see from an outsider's point of view it wasn't just a cash grab from from that and that's only my opinion I could see your branding off doing what you're doing but why not progress to again what's what's the favorite thing Italians and Greeks love food food, 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 yeah. food eating you know, family and, together and you have growing you know. up with it a lot of people like on the street because I think that was. Well, Ligon Street's an iconic, and I've only been in Melbourne for two years, but Carlton, yeah. Ligon Street is like an iconic street. And yeah. what else to do an Italian restaurant? Yeah. But we that- grew up there as kids, you know. Like when I say grew up there, we, we, we grew up in the southeast, but nearly every Saturday, you know, you go with your family and friends and you'd walk up and down. You go to pizza by the meter, you have a pizza and then you walk, get a, a gelati, yeah. walk up and down the street, then go home. That was your outing. That was your thing. You so know? you're going to start gelati as well off the, off the, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, there's maybe, always yeah, options. Never, never say never. They yeah. never say never. Yeah. That's yeah. Could be. And this got- brand, we wanted to turn this brand into something, something big, something special, yeah. you know. Um, with the restaurant, we made sure we partnered up with two or some people that really knew business of the, uh, the, of the restaurant business because we have no idea. We're about not going to be in there flipping pizzas and stuff we like that. <laughs> we'll just fuck it right up. But, yeah. but it'd be, yeah, it'd be, oh, I, I can't wait. When when does it sort of look like opening? Meant to be end of May. Yeah. End of May, okay. Yeah, May. if all goes, all goes no, to Lots end. gone into it too. I mean, this is a five-year concept. It didn't didn't start No, I was going to say, nothing, nothing Much like, like the wine took us about two years to put that together and it's, it's important to us, like Carl said, that it's authentic and it's real. And I think people – like you said, they're starting to understand that it's for real. It's not there's what there's no cash no, grab. It's no. it's whatever it is, it's authentic and it's meant to be for the people and to, to, to make it make yeah. it about to- whatever we do, we always I'd rather put more money into something and get less return as long as it's perfect and as long as it represents what we're about. What you're about. Like a hundred percent. Like I wouldn't just if someone said, Oh mate, just sit, like I said this before, we had a frozen pizza company. That wanted to do a deal with us. Okay, and we're like, you know, and they're talking some the big money, numbers too, big yeah. money and stuff, and we're like, all right, we could take the deal, we could get the get the grab. get the cash grab, uh, but when someone opens that pizza box and they put it in the microwave and it comes out and it looks like someone vomited on that pizza, uh, they're going to think of us. We're, we're a trusted brand. We're supposed to be the there representatives goes. of ethnics and and, and you know, good proper food. There goes our credibility. That's uh, everyone's trusting in us yeah. to, to to wave the flag, and yeah. can't, we just couldn't do it. So nah. we just said, "Sorry, it's not it's not for us." And, and with the wine, uh, you know, we we tried to do a fifteen fifteen dollar bottle of wine to be, um, uh, you know, to make it affordable for everyone and and so forth. And and then for people come, some people are out there going, "Ah, it's crap." Well. For your palate, who probably drinks a hundred, two hundred dollar bottle of wine, it's wine crap. Really hurt me. Yeah. You know, uh, well, no, I mean a couple. You know, but it's an actually beautiful bottle of wine for fifteen dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, it's so quite weird. my age, it's the best selling um, San Giovese in uh, <laughs> in Denmark. Now, you, now you're the yeah, wanker. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the wanker is <laughs> rubbing <laughs> up on him. Now. It's that, but it, it, it's we got rated like again. What was going into the bottle had to be. Good, Spot on, yeah. and it had to be affordable for, yeah. for for everyone. We don't want to say, okay, yeah, it's good, but yeah, you can have hundred bucks, hundred bucks a bottle. bottle. Like, Fuck that's, that's, you know, yeah, we yeah, might come out with a premium rage later, but that's yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it only, it'd only be sensible to do it, yeah, in, in right. when you got the restaurant going because well, we everyone. Are, we are bringing out, I think, well, at the moment, uh, two or three more bottles of wine have been approved, different variants. Okay. And I think there's like another two or three that is that because it happens in in slots. So there'll be more wine coming out soon. The restaurant, you know, sort of hopefully tie in with the restaurant, and we've got a couple other projects on mm-hmm. on the go as well. So, look, it's but like what the boys said. Look, what Carlo just said. Whatever we do, we hope to just make it a good synergy and yeah. honest with the brand. And I and I think obviously only just sort of knowing you guys and and uh, meeting you guys, but knowing you social social media wise, it's yeah. I think is a 
absolutely doing the right thing with the authenticity of it. That's what I love about you is, you know, how you go about that from the Italian and Greek scenario. But we, but all, we always want to do something that that's like we, we were born on social media. So if we ever do anything, you know, to, uh, to, to promote a social media brand, that still works because it's part of where we were born. If we want to do something for waving the flag, food wise, same thing. It's yeah. it's part of the the yeah. the, the brand. So I just gotta just I don't know. A lot of people out yeah, there that nah. just go for everything, yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Well before we In saying that we are gonna do a eyelash brand. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, so that's no, hey, no, what a good a, I was gonna say that's a fucking good idea. <laughs> yeah. And G strings we're gonna Yeah, because yeah, it's a good synergy. And, uh, and tampons. Yeah, it's tampons. Tampons. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and what's the other li- no, yeah. <laughs> before we finish up the one question, because I've been around, obviously, high-profile people and always laugh, when you when you meet people in public and you aren't dressed in your gear, whether it's Bambies, because I did hear you do visit Bambies every now and again, <laughs> uh, or you're out at weddings, you're out somewhere else, does it ever get, do you ever get tired of when you get the either the sober or the drunk yep. and they come up and they go, hey, this is sushi, yeah. and then it's like, fuck, they want me. You know, I'm not that person at the moment. I'm not that character. Yeah. Sometimes it, does that get tiring at this uh, stage? No, man. No, yeah. for, for me it does. It's a blessing, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I, one day it's going to go away. Yeah, man. yeah, that's true. That's true. In yeah. one form or another, yeah, it will it will go away. Whether we, you know, like uh, whether we die out, which we will make sure that we try not to, or you just – Die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna stop. So no, no definitely <laughs> when you're dead, well, you just, it's definitely you're, well, you're fucking die. dead. dead. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, That's definitely that, that, real. So like, <laughs> when you think about it, it's gonna stop one day. Yeah. Um but yeah, no, all always grateful, always, always We'll never say no to a photo. Always have a yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes but you do get those. Some, uh, sometimes just like if, if someone gets a, f- a camera and, and says, "Hey, can you say uh, something funny oh. or say pull your bastard to yeah. my phone?" It's and like you it's just a bit had a fight with, with the missus at home, and that's, that's like, probably what I was meaning more. When you're out in public with your wife or the kids, and everyone just automatically because they follow you, their friends, yeah. and then yeah. all of a sudden go, "Hey, can you say this?" Or yeah. "Hey, it just depends how they do it." Like, hey, look, it's like this. Yeah, it's like any job has its has its ups and downs. True that pros and and you like certain parts of your job better than you like other parts of your job. There's nothing in this job that I say that I think any of us hate. Nah. There is parts yes. you like more than others. Um, but by and large, what's a fucking alternative? Going back to putting my blundstones on <laughs> and going back to work. This is it. I'm, I'll take it. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Yeah. Uh, with I love, it's, 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 it's we're accolade. We're very, very privileged yeah. being in this position. Yeah. Very, Accolade, very privileged. Accolades is good, right? Very privileged. Accolades very privileged. is yeah. it's always a nice thing. So, And before before I finish up, because I usually ask this question to all my single single guests, and now I've got the, the trio with me. Yeah. <laughs> in right at present now, what's, what's your rich life – in your in your present time, what what give you? And when I say rich life, I'm not talking about the the likes, the the money, the fame, and all that. But just what's in your heart? What really is your rich life at at present? Start with you, Andrew. Oh, can you can you take it? Right. No, oh, I, yeah. just because I'm but just my, my about rich it. life at the moment is I'm, I'm I'm not working a day in my life because I'm doing what I love. Beautiful. Well, fuck. I was going to say that, wasn't I? <laughs> well, that's why. No, we're honestly, first. can I say something? <laughs> well, probably that goes for the whole three yeah, of us, to be it, honest. It really does. It does. It really does. My rich life is the fact that I get to do this with my brothers. Oh. I get to do this with my brothers. Hang on. It honestly, yeah. does, it honestly doesn't. It honestly doesn't feel like work because it just it just doesn't. We we. It's just yeah. I, I, that that's the if if I if I wasn't with them, I don't think I would be doing it. I just I just. Enjoy every day. I could stay with them twenty four hours a day. Yeah, we fight every now and again, but it, by and large, that's that's that's, uh, it's family, that's what, it? yeah, it's family, and it's um, it's a privilege to do it with the boys. No. I second that that thing. It's, it's I couldn't think of a better group of blokes to hang out. I, we spend more time. I spend more time with these guys than I do with my family. I was going to so, say with the wife. So and, kids. Uh, and we fight less than I fight with my family. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a real privilege in that. But you know, helping people. I mean, I'm, we're all passionate about helping people in one way or another. And I'm just being able to do it through laughter is a real privilege. 100%. You know what I mean? 100%. I mean, because there's people out there hurting and needing. Uh, needing uh, to be brought, have that day be brightened up, and it's just a real privilege to be able to do that. We get lots of messages from people 
who are going through some rough times, and uh, it's it's just great to be a part of that process of healing people, you know, yep. through yeah, through yeah, laughter. Yeah, you know? so yeah it's, no. it's good. No, I honestly, I agree hundred percent. And uh, again, thank you for your time today, boys. I know you're super busy with everything's going on. No but, uh, yeah, it's been an absolute uh, privilege and honour to uh, have you guys on the Rich Life Projects and uh, thank you for your time again. No worries, mate. Thanks thank for you, man. Us on it. And on. I want to come to your gym and maybe get you to hold mitts for me, oh, get, give me a few pointers. Uh, you know, I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get into the, su- you know, the sushi mango, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, do you need any bag carriers or anything? I don't care. <laughs> you know, even restaurant, I'll probably apply for one of the old, uh, you know, because I think I've seen that anyone needs a, uh, what is it, the waitress? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be my character, the waitress yeah, yeah, and yeah. the sushi mango. Yeah, 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 yeah. The red yeah, yeah, Australian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The red yeah, Australian. Red Australian. Thank you, boys. Thank, Thank you. you Thanks, Absolute pleasure. It was a lot of fun. Thank you.